Hey, what's up? Uh, welcome back to the ramblings and the word soup that comes out of my mouth, uh, or the channel that we like to call most sports here. I actually made a decision to not wait a year in between making new YouTube videos, uh, which is a, a novel concept for me, but we're going to give it a shot and try and make more than uh, one a year, and maybe we'll see where things go from there. EA is, is really making me, me want to make more videos because I am really excited about this new college football video game. Uh, they have been doing and saying all of the right things so far, and that's kind of what I want to talk about today in this video. Uh, again, it's going to be a yap fest like you're used to, but I want to break down this, this deep dive gameplay blog uh, while, while touching on why I think we have good hope for this game, because I think EA is really listening this time, and some things the game has going for it. It's not going to be as in-depth as some of the other videos you see. They, a lot of people do really great jobs breaking down the intricacies of the game plan little things, and I just kind of want to go bullet point by bullet point, but explaining why these things mean we're on the right track, and a lot of this is just beating the Madden reskin allegations if we go here onto twitter i have this pulled up i just googled or, or i went on twitter and looked up madden reskin and it is just a bunch of people saying can't wait to see how the madden reskin people react to this uh madden reskin people want attention uh bordeaux has been made his whole twitter dedicated to the madden reskin uh allegations are are false Basically, those allegations are dead. Uh, but I think EA was really, really aware of that when releasing that trailer. Um, so we're going to go ahead now, if my mouse would uh, freaking work. Hello. There we go. Uh, and we're going to go and do this, uh, this... Talk about this gameplay deep dive a little bit. Watch the trailer on your own. I've heard it's copyrighted, but it's a really solid trailer. Um, Kirk Herbstreet's in it, like they said, a, a peace offering to Ohio State fans, which just tells me they're listening because there were a lot of Ohio State fans who were bitching and moaning after the first trailer. As an Ohio State fan myself, um, I, I was not the one of the ones bitching and moaning, but uh, about Ohio State losing to Illinois in the trailer as well as getting stiff-armed by Michigan – they brought in Kirk Herbstreit. You know, he was going to probably do it regardless. But that's a cute thing they included saying, look, we were listening to you that you were pissed, even though Ohio State fans are pissed off about everything. Um, so we're going to uh, go down in here and look at some of the things that they have uh, brought to us. Uh, so we have the, the campus IQ and this pregame stuff that they're talking about, which immediately they come into. This is different from the NFL, and it will be different from Madden. It'll feel different from Madden. A lot of the time when you are playing Madden, no players will feel different from one another, and they are at least saying right now that this will be true. That in college football, the worst players do stink, and the best players are really, really good. I used this example um, in another record I tried to do, that the worst or the, the players on Akron and the players on Alabama, the gap between them is so much bigger than players on, like, the Carolina Panthers and the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, a lot of those players could be interchanged, um, and the levels of the team wouldn't completely drop off. Um, you know, complete changes, you know, if Mahomes went to the Panthers or something and Young and they switch, but, you know, certain aspects of the team – you know, wouldn't be a complete fall off versus the best player on Akron probably isn't even as good as one of the worst players on Bama. So it's good that they're leaning into that. And it's good that they're, they are talking about the different playbooks being meaningful air force running the triple option, USC running the air raid being big deals to them in this game. Um, I worry. I don't worry about the gameplay as much. I don't think that was a worry to me that facing Air Force and facing USC on the field would feel 
the same. My worry comes with the Sim because the Sim has been god awful in Madden, and if they're going to continue with this, uh, this game is nothing like Madden. Hopefully, they change the Sim formula a little formula a little bit. But if I'm looking at simulation stats in my dynasty because I like to go deep in them and I like to check on all the other teams and what they're doing, I want to see Michigan running the crap out of the ball. I want to see the military academies running the crap out of the ball. I want to see USC and I want to see Texas Tech. I want to see their air raid offenses. Um, I don't even know if Texas Tech runs those anymore. Sorry if I'm a, a casual there. Um, but historically, that's what they would run. And I want, I want to see those types of things. Um, reflected in the sim as well. That's just one of my shouting at the sky type complaints. Something I don't really see people worried about, but it has been a really bad thing in Madden, and I hope it gets corrected um, in NCAA. Um, the stick work. Basically, this is just saying, look, we saw that you guys hate how Madden plays gameplay-wise. We, we understand that you are worried that Madden is really slow and stiff and doesn't feel fun to play, and we are going to make NCAA a fast game to play. That jump felt fast to me. If we go up here to the uh, preview here, let me make sure I mute it so I don't get claimed or anything. Uh, this very beginning, this spin move looks fast as shit by Ollie Gordon, right? So those things are important to keep your mind on that they are diff trying to make sure that they're differentiating from Madden, not only from their words, but we're seeing them back it up. Um, the wear and tear, another great example, the progressive fatigue in Madden stinks. So they're going to overhaul it. We're going to completely overhaul the wear and tear system, specific body parts getting highlighted where specific players might need a rest, might not for certain players. For like a quarterback, for example, your arm being really banged up is going to be a much bigger deal versus like a DB, uh, the the injury risk on there. Um, so I think it's going to matter based on position, but it's also going to matter, you know, analyzing certain, you know, your running backs might, their legs might be really worn down. You're going to say, I need to rest this running back for a game or they're going to get shut down for the season if things don't go well. And I think being able to see these things on this chart like that is a really good change. Um, and it's, it's a really good move away from the, pro the progressive fatigue system that, that was not good at all. And I think they understand that. My only fear is that this is going to be – it's not going to let the star players play. You know, it's realistic for – Defensive linemen to be rotating, linebackers to be rotating, running backs to be rotating constantly because they're constantly slamming into each other and, and taking big hits. I, I want to see offensive linemen and quarterbacks, though, mostly be in the game unless a quarterback takes a big hit or he they suffered injury while running. Um, but, you know, quarterbacks do get hit a lot and they do stay in the game and they don't rotate in and out. I just want to be curious. I'm just curious to see how this is going to be reflected in the game. And I'm not worried about it. I think it is a good change. Anything's better than what's currently in the game. So I am excited about that. The option, of course, they're going to talk about the option. The option stinks in that, and it's going to be good in this game. I'm almost positive um, from everything I've heard. So we're going to go ahead and move on with that. Uh, stuff about alignment um, and defensive coverages. Um, you can you can read this out here. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a huge thing that differentiates the games. It's basically just an improvement, quality of life. I'm not going to say this is a Madden-specific thing. Um, abilities. Another thing. The YouTubers who EA flew up to Orlando... Uh, as well as EA themselves, are saying, look, Superstar X Factor is not in the game. We know people like that. We know it doesn't make sense. So they're adding more of like a 2K badge system, which I think is a lot more appropriate for college football because there does need to be a gameplay way to make special players different from players who aren't as good. And I think giving them these abilities are important. Um... Now, my opinion on some of the abilities and how it affects the competitive scene. 
are maybe a little negative on certain ones, like the field general. I don't think in a competitive game, because you have a certain quarterback, you should be able to quickly identify uh, disguise coverages. I think that might not be super great for the competitive community. Um, but for a dynasty, single player specifically, I think that makes a lot of sense for realism um, and making the game stronger overall um, or more... What's the word I'm looking for? Making the game more immersive overall. I think these are, are a very good uh, a sign going forward um, for those. I think this is going to make the game feel much different if these abilities kind of do what they say, but also aren't going to be like a, if you get five rushes of 10 yards, you get an ability that lets you stiff arm someone every time you run the ball. That doesn't make sense. That's not how it works. These are going to be things that are active in totality, but also don't seem game breaking yet. There are like 80 of these abilities. So we might see some that are game breaking, but also in college football, some players are game breaking. I bet you like Lamar Jackson, that doesn't seem very fair either. Um, so for a competitive sense, maybe not great, but for dynasty and single player, which is the thing that they've really been emphasizing, which I love, I think this is a great change. Uh, this nice menu of Travis Hunter, I think it looks good. Abilities aren't final. Uh, games in development, which is something to make sure that you take a look at. Um, like I said, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. Platinum kind of replaces Hall of Fame, but those are the NBA 2k badge tiers which i think nba 2k overall has been a stronger game than madden uh recently um so i guess we're we're upgrading from the shittiest game to just kind of like a shitty game uh confidence and composure this is just an important aspect that we'll kind of dive into more where they just want you to feel that in college football not all games are equal a game with Ohio State versus Akron is different than Ohio State versus Michigan. Going into Happy Valley for the whiteout, going to Death Valley um, for a night game at LSU, those are very different um, things. And a freshman handles that situation much differently than a senior, and that gets reflected in the gameplay, which, again, I think is a great difference. And I think if it does anything that's kind of the big thing with all of this is we're kind of just waiting to see do these things they're saying do things actually do things but if they do great change coach vision kind of just a way to show you a lot of the things i just talked about uh so we'll kind of glance over that again great videos out there already um that break these down more and then here's the home field advantage, the stadium false meter. If you're playing a game at Sam Houston State, you're not going to get as affected versus the shaky screen at Ohio State um, and the, the wiggly lines and the icons disappearing when you try to throw the ball. Um, so I think that's a, a nice thing. Even though it's been kind of in games like Madden um, before, from what I have heard, it does play a bigger impact that you play noticeably worse when you're in these environments and don't have the proper abilities and players. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. I think me alongside every single person um, around is excited to play in a Penn State whiteout game or a game in, in Death Valley. Um, so home field advantage, that's a great part of college football. Happy to see it down there. Here's, what, here's an example of the whiteout. Alex Orgy's down there. None of his icons are available. All of the things are shaking. Um, you know, the audible's not getting through in real life. I think it's a, you know, they're showing it. Let's see how well it's executed, but I think it's a good step. Uh, Pre-play controls. While I was saying that the abilities might be a negative for competitive, I think... The pre-play controls and the switch stick, which we're going to talk about down here, are going to greatly add to the skill ceiling, and it's going to be let competitive players be really good at the game, um, and I'm excited about that. Um, 
being in here. Um, the revamp passing, I think, to me, and maybe this is just me trying to connect every single thing in some web that doesn't really exist. This might get added to Madden for all I know. But I, this excites me because it seems to make it that the difference in players really, really matter. Versus in Madden, you can probably get the job done in most games with a 70 overall versus a 90 overall. In this one, you're probably not by the sounds of things. It's going to be really, really hard to get things done with bad players. And with good players, you should be able to win. Um, but I think this revamp passing is a good thing that makes it a lot harder to play with bad players, which is even a problem in the NCAA games where it is very doable to win the game with 60 overall type players in NCAA, um, even on Heisman mode. So that's a positive for me. Switch stick, like I said, this is something I have to imagine will be going to Madden soon if it's popular. Uh, this has been a lot of talk from a lot of people. Um, talk about the nine-year-olds are going to make me uh, quit this game in the first week from this feature. Um, I think this is great for the, the competitive scene of the game and creating a high skill ceiling. Playbooks. I think it's kind of silly that the playbooks and team style are one of their, their big selling points of the game. And like I kind of talked about before, I am nervous about how all of these things are reflected in the sim. But they do talk about more um, RPO options, more college-type plays, trick plays, um, things that just make college more college-y and, and saying we are not just going to dump the Madden plays in there and give you those. We're going to give you a whole variety, 1,500 um, new plays and 50 formations uh, being included, uh, which is a, a really good thing. Uh, it. It's it's expected for a college game. You should expect it, but it's good. Tempo, I think this is a great thing where you get to decide how you, you play the game. If you're no huddling, audibles um, are still possible. Um, but if you have the, the turbo mode turned on, which is the fast pace offense they're saying think back to the blur offense at Oregon you are trading the ability to hot route and audible at the line of scrimmage uh, for the chance that the defense is not set or if you have some plays you like to run and go 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 and you want to run this fast pace offense you can but when you do it you're trading away your ability to hot route change the play right at the line which I think is something that is uh a really, really fun thing to do in the game um, that kind of differentiates, you know, do I want to run a slow, methodical offense? Do I want to run a super fast-paced, gas-my-opponent-type offense? Uh, and it gives you those options and makes them feel different. Um, back to more real-time coaching stuff. We kind of talked about that. Again, other people can kind of get on this um, better than I can. Uh, in the trenches as well. Offensive line, defensive line play uh, has kind of changed in this game. Rain affecting things in the game, rain and snow. I'll believe that when I see it. Uh, every year they kind of say it does something, and I can't really tell. But we'll see if it affects things for real. Um, the little things that they talk about, that's a good thing. Uh, I, I know these are all very specific different things but even just having a headline called it's the little things i feel like they would never advertise that um for madden because they neglect the little things every single year with that game um but i'm glad that they they are adding a lot of these these things as well one foot catches again you'd hope but they're in there uh walk to the line animations defensive pursuit um, playmaker mechanics have been revamped and then play action stuff uh, all been tweaked kicking has been made way harder that's super exciting um, <laughs> I'm making a, I made a joke on Twitter uh, someone did that you know my first kick in college football 25 is going to be like uh, the kick that ended the Ohio State Georgia playoff game just shanking it horribly 
Um, a lot of the YouTubers I was talking about earlier said they never even got a perfect, perfect kick. Um, it's a lot harder. Great addition to me. Like I said, the college, some college quarterbacks stink, like most college kickers stink. So it's good that that they have have changed the kicking mechanics to not make it automatic. Hopefully, maybe you can get a hang of it immediately and it'll be super easy. Well, we'll see. Uh, swag out, more attention to detail, not super important. Victory formation, this is a great quality of life change uh, where kneel downs, uh, they can just skip you to the end of the game if you kneel down with less than 30 seconds left. It just goes straight to a handshake animation. Um, great thing for me, just sitting around waiting for the kneel down to be done. Kind of pointless, so I'm glad they added that. And that's pretty much it in this. A lot of these things I talked about are very, very applicable to Dynasty. Um, and that's because EA is well aware that this game is kind of for the people that they have kind of been neglecting for so long. Uh, with 134 teams, it is very hard to balance. And this is never going to be exactly the game for all of the the hardcore competitive Madden scene. Um, they're definitely going to have a spot in this game. And things like the switch stick and things like the route changes they've added, I think will definitely make it a probably even a better competitive game than Madden because the gameplay is going to be more fun. Um, but they have not gotten this twisted. This is going to be a game for the single player or online dynasty folks. There's going to be a Dynasty deep dive later on, what I've heard, so I'll probably react to that as well. Um, but like I said, when we go to the game modes, if my mouse will work. First thing you see, boom, Dynasty, it's back. Second thing you see, boom, Road to Glory, it's back. And then finally, the third thing you see is Ultimate Team. I think a lot of people have been terrified about Ultimate Team's presence in this game. Um, although I think it, for at least the first year, God, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm not going to spend a dime on it, but it might be kind of fun. Um, just being like, oh, like all these play, all these old players who, who end up getting their bag, but they actually get to be in a college game now in their college jerseys. You can see them in their college jerseys um, in the game now as college football legends. Um, and I think that'll be at least a nice thing to see. But they're not saying this is going to be the main point of the game. It's Dynasty is the main point and that's really exciting um a couple of things i want to touch on real quick because i've been mostly positive in this video a couple things i'm upset about no cross play in dynasty is a huge bummer i know a lot of people who have xboxes a lot of people who have ps5 so the fact those people can't play to each other sucks if there's one thing i know i could change about the game that i would even right this minute it would be changing that other things, Road to Glory won't feature high school. There'll be no mascot mashup. Um, things that are a huge bummer to me because they're what made the old game so special. These little special things they didn't need to add, but they did add because it's the right... It, it, it makes the game more charming and more special um, having these cute little things in them. But also I understand that a lot of people don't give a shit about these things and they're going to, as long as there's a deep, deep dynasty mode that works well, um, they're not going to be that concerned about it. Um, so yeah, I think this was just a thing I was really excited and passionate to talk about, um, and how excited I am about it. And I think EA is really passionate and excited to show you that this game is not Madden. The allegations have been defeated. And whether this game comes out broken and buggy and unfun or super great, they are making an effort to show us that they are listening. And I can't imagine it comes out bad because of the fact that we can tell that they are actually listening this time. And I am really excited about that fact. Um, so thank you all for watching. Uh, for my yapping and rambling this time like 
only like a month in between videos or a month or two. That was pretty exciting. Um, so we're going to freaking feast in about a month here when this game comes out. Uh, thank you so much for listening and watching, and I will see you guys next time.